Hi there. I'm going to tell you why I think that the digital format has played one of the most important roles in the evolution of cinema. But before I do that, I think it will be important to highlight some of the key milestones in the history of digital cinema. It was only 25 years ago, in the late 1980s and early 1990s, that James Cameron and Steven Spielberg introduced highly realistic computer-generated imagery, CGI, onto the big screen with the likes of The Abyss, Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park. This represented a major breakthrough in computing technology in that realistic elements could be rendered and composited into the action albeit requiring an army of people and months of painstaking work to do so. Audiences flocked to the cinema to behold the spectacle and film theorists contemplated the implications of this potential new domain of cinema experience. One such theorist, Stephen Prince, expressed in his 1996 article, True Lies, the digital cinema may present problems of indexicality for the audience in terms of the perceptual comprehension of CGI elements. It seems so extraordinary today that something as simple as an animated CGI object flying across the room could have caused such transformation. As computing technology developed during the 1990s, the opportunities for what could be presented on screen with CGI opened up significantly. As Amish Wood highlighted in a 2002 article, Time Spaces and Spectacular Cinema, the CGI aspect of films such as The Matrix or A Perfect Storm shifted from serving as background to being a more active element within the narrative, such that an additional dimension is created through its influence on time and space for the characters. Think, for example, some sort of wormhole that opens up that influences the time and space continuum. Something like that. Wood also highlighted the complex implications of this shift and the need to rethink the conventions of narrative in spectacular cinema. As the quality of computer graphics improved at the turn of the century, ambitions to realise human or pseudo-human forms in CGI got bigger and bigger. The perceived weightlessness of our web-slinging hero in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man and the cartoon-like representation of the titular monster in Ang Lee's Hulk have been levelled as examples of where ambition may have exceeded technological capabilities at the time. However, as highlighted by Lisa Peirce in her 2007 article, Digital Heroes in Contemporary Hollywood, the comic book hero movie cycle of the noughties operated as a key site of negotiation for spectators and filmmakers alike over what kind of virtual bodies can be tolerated. The quality of pro-filmic human representation has gone from strength to strength. Even though Peirce expressed concerns that the spectator will be doomed to a perpetual state of perceptual crisis. Looking back at those films from the turn of the century, it really is hard to believe that we bought into the illusion. Wouldn't you agree, Tony? So, can you guess why I think the digital format has played one of the most important roles in the evolution of cinema? Not yet? Well then, let's go on. As we experience the brave new technological world of the 2010s or teens, computer animation is now widely considered to be merely one aspect of the communications revolution and is now a mainstream cinema practice. 
In Paul Wells' 2011 article on computer animation, he tracks the CG pioneers who face constant resistance to their innovative technology by the film industry and how it ironically gave way to the almost total adoption of CGI in the cartoon animations that we see today. We can hardly watch any media nowadays without seeing live performers combined with computer-generated characters and 3D environments. As Wells says, live action has become like animation, as one has become virtually indistinguishable from the other. In terms of the equipment available to filmmakers, then digital is now outstripping the traditional cellulite format in terms of performance and clarity of image. However, it is interesting to see that some filmmakers persist in using traditional cellulite. And oftentimes, filmmakers who shoot in digital actively downgrade the image or add artificial grain to try to achieve a more traditional filmic look. This nostalgia is not only present in the style of recent cinema, with examples such as The Artist, a silent film shot in black and white celluloid, but it has also moved into the narrative with the likes of Scorsese's Hugo, a love letter to the pioneering days of filmmaking. In Dominic Schrey's 2014 article on analogue nostalgia, he concludes that the purpose of this analogue decay is to simulate the life or soul that the digital was always lacking. In 2012's sci-fi side documentary, Keanu Reeves mediates the debate between celluloid and digital filmmaking. And although there are some die-hard celluloid devotees, the film industry has all but fully embraced the digital medium. Now everything I've shown you in this film exemplifies why I think that the digital format has played one of the most important roles in the history of cinema. It's not the spectacle in itself. It's the immediacy of being able to have an idea and realise it instantly. In some respects, film has been brought a lot closer to the likes of music and painting, in that the artists can express themselves more directly. For this film, I came up with all the visual ideas myself and then filmed them, putting small cameras wherever I wanted to. And then I edited it myself, all within a matter of hours. I didn't have to wait for a team of specialists to help me realise my vision. Okay, so that's not entirely true. Let me introduce the team. Our writer-director. Hi. Our cinematographer. Hey, how are you? And finally, our editor. Hi. Thank you for watching. <laughs>